I was born blind. As I got older, my parents explained that I was unable to see. They told me that I had been born this way, and that nobody was really sure how or why it happened. It was disbelief initially. Um, we weren't ready for that news. Um, we were both kind of caught off guard. But I think that quickly it became, what are the resources that are available? For a parent. I think immediately after your initial surprise and shock and certainly concern, um, upset, then it's a matter of um, what do I need to learn in order to um, make this work. As a kid, I would often ask my parents, why? Why was it that I couldn't see when my sister and my friends could? Why did I need to learn to walk with a cane? Why was I learning to use Braille? My parents were really great about answering all of my questions, and believe me, there were lots of them. Patrick had a different schedule than any of the rest of us. His day was night. I remember one time being worried about sending out Christmas card pictures because he had bruises across his forehead because he would run through the house and bang into things and bounce off and keep going. Whatever Katie, his sister did, he was doing. And so I don't think I ever really distinguished it in my mind that, oh, my brother's that different from everybody else's brother. If she was... Climbing a tree. He was, he was climbing climb a tree. tree. If she was on the swings, he was on the swings, the slides, riding bikes. Um, he was just always on the go. He's in and out of buildings in snowstorms, in, uh, you know, uh, icy sidewalks, manipulating, maneuvering, negotiating different scenarios. I see him motoring to the uh, Life Sports Center, right, when he's going to go to the gym. I see him going off between classes, uh, with somebody, without somebody. Bad weather, good weather, you know, he's not deterred. Teachers would often be nervous at the beginning of a year. Um, what does this mean? Because they'd never had a blind student before in class. As the year moved on, they would say to me, oh, I forget he's blind. I guess I learned to appreciate what I have, but I also learned that even with a disability, life's not that much different. Patrick has been a trailblazer since he's been here on campus. He does not dwell on anything that is negative. He is a move forward person. For us, it was always not a matter of you can't do something because you're blind. That was never acceptable. But how do we help you do this? I met Norman Kritz when I was about 18 years old. Uh, I was an assistant golf professional at Penn Sock and Country Club. Uh, Norman had come over, he had played at the golf course, I'd known him, but uh, he came over one day and asked if I wouldn't mind helping uh, with regrouping some golf clubs for him for a junior program that he has for blind golfers. My first involvement with the Middle Atlantic Blind Golf Association was about 19 years ago when I was doing a golf clinic at the Widener School in Philadelphia. Uh, I asked Gil to be a target so that children there who were physically and mentally challenged could see that a blind guy could hit the golf ball. We had an ongoing relationship and, and he gave me a call and, and asked if um, you know, our foundation with the section would help out with his junior golf program. And now we're, we're six years later into a fantastic relationship with Norman and, and Gil and, and everybody at, uh, at Mid-Atlantic Blind Golf Association and their junior programs. And I remember discussing it with uh, Al Balukas uh, a number of times. He says that the idea is fantastic. He says if you take one child and, and it helps that one child, the whole program is worthwhile. My grandfather was one of those golfers who would be out there as early as you could open the course. Afterward, he would come to our house and tell stories from his round. The shots he'd hit, the holes he'd played well, and what it all looked like. As a little kid listening to those stories, I was fascinated by the game. I guess Patrick just heard these stories.